Hi everybody, welcome back. This is part 12. So we are going to get started on a kind of a little bit of a background. Um, it's not going to be too crazy. It's it, most of it's like blurry anyway. Um, so we're going to do a mama horse right here. And now she doesn't have a whole lot of detail on her. So we should, she does have a piece of hay like through her hair. Um, Truthfully, I'm probably not going to put that in there because it'll. I think it'll kind of look weird, especially if they're all not covered in hay. I know there's like hay, like, kind of closer to the bottom, but it's, it's just not something I, at the moment, want to incorporate. Um, and plus, it, it's just one. It's just so random. So, we will get started with the eye. <laughs> I'm not too concerned about um, with this over here being 100% because it's just supposed to look as if like she's there just chilling. And she's also kind of blurry in the picture too. So that kind of lets you have some artistic freedom. <laughs> So right now I'm just kind of mapping in the eye and then I'm going to take a light color pencil, my cream. <laughs> I don't think, I. give me one second, I don't think that this horse on the side uh, goes all the way and I'm, and I would like to just kind of crop out a little bit of what I actually am not drawing. Okay, I got it saved. So now, okay, that's much better. I was like, I'm going to start adding all this detail in and I don't need, I really don't need all of it. Got a highlight here and it goes down under the eye. Got a nice little one there. And again, she's she's blurry, so you still kind of want to go in the direction of the hair. You don't want to just randomly start coloring in everything. And then this goes off the page. I don't know if you can hear, but I'm literally just adding the color on there. And I might... <laughs> kind of erase that line a little bit. I just don't want that pencil getting into the drawing itself, though we'll probably fade it out. Okay, there's that. Taking my purple because she does have the shadow from the full on her. Comes up here. No, I'm trying to go in the direction of the fur. And I'm not trying to look 100% with the mom, okay? And again, this will all get blended out as we go. It's like this is make our lives simple here. I can go ahead and probably use this purple and map out some of our colors down here where our shadows are going to go.
So this is her crevice of her mouth here. All right, we got a literally the basic of basic outlines here. <laughs> I don't want pumpkin orange quite yet. Uh, yeah, we can do burnt sienna. And I don't want to get rid of all of the lines around the eye because I don't want to accidentally make the eye too big or anything. And again, just go in the general direction of the hair. And then we'll just kind of soften as we go up. Oh. Sorry, this is a weird angle. I'm like, my arm's all like doing this thing up here because I can't. Do it any other way. And the hair growth is awkward. Sometimes you're just in awkward positions coloring. And you just roll with it. She's got a nice shadow right there. She's got a little bit of color there. Go ahead and I'll map in the eye, the kind of top of the eyelid crease. The crease. All right, you really can't see any too much detail down this way. It's all it's all getting very blurry. This is where <laughs> sometimes in a drawing where you're like it's like you want to do more detail, but you know if you do, it'll take away from the main focus. And I don't want to do that. Now we are going to blend this all together, so I'm not too concerned about putting hard layers on at the moment. Now there are some like little things we are going to try to keep in here. She has like some like little, like a little bit of, um, I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's veins or if it's like, you know, so, like horses sometimes have like little moles sometimes. If it's that, <laughs> but we'll just go right around.
colors coming in. Uh, we're going to use, I think this Dijon color is like a really nice color to go over top of things. Um, I need my eraser. Oh, and pink. Actually, I would, I would like to put some pink in there. I have peach. We'll use this peach color. And your backgrounds that you do, you don't have to make them complicated unless, like, that's like your tent. Like, you're maybe you're doing a full scenery, and you really want to do like a really intricate background. Um, I have other commissions to do, and this is not a commissioned piece, so I have to kind of pick my battles. <laughs> pick it kind of what I want to do and then go from there but I really want to finish this today so I think we can I think we can do it we just gotta keep going here I don't want to rush though if it's going to take us a, a another video to finish it then it will take us another video but I think we will be doing okay The form is starting to come along. I wonder how many of you are stressing that I'm like, <laughs> I'm just going for it. All right, now I feel like I'm ready. Um, we're not gonna add too much more mid-tones because I want to start adding a lot more of the darker colors. And I'm gonna start, this is our uh, black raspberry from the Prismacolor. Now, if I don't add this and I add like all of my mineral spirits or whatever I'm going to use to help blend this, I'm not going to get the color or the amount of wax that I need on my paper to do this. So now we kind of just add in all of our little bits of color here and then 
Um, once we get a majority of what we want on there, then I'm going to go back in with whatever blending method I choose today and get this all blended out. Sorry, I'm looking for a particular color and that is black. That is not the color I want. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> I was looking for our 90% cool gray. And I'm afraid to zoom in on like a particular area and I know like we're off to the side, but I want you guys to see like how this develops and like kind of train your eye like, okay, this is the focus and this is a subject off to the side and see how it correlates to something that is in the middle of your piece. So I'm not going to move my camera to put this in the middle as much as you probably really want me to. I just want you to see how it develops with our picture here. And no, I am still not done with this. Every time I look at it, I keep forgetting <laughs> to add this little extra bit of shadow across the nose. I literally purposely left it like this because I just wanted to get all the other colors on first and I wanted to see how dark I made those before I did that. Well, anyway, so that's for a, a different topic, but I'm gonna add this 90% uh, cool gray down into the nose. And again, does not have to be 100% perfect. Once you tell yourself that, you get less, like you stop like squinting at your picture and all that stuff, especially if this is, now, if this was a commission, be like, yeah, I want mom, like, and someone's like, I want the baby full and I want the mama on there, I would be, whoop, hold up. Let's take our time. Let's actually get this so that I have more of like mom face in there with the full or even ask for a better mom full picture if like we have more view of mama horse, but nope, this, I just thought this was a really nice photo. Now, any originals that I have, I do buy creative rights um, for these photos. So if you guys are using the photos from my videos to maybe draw or practice with or whatever, I recommend that you do that extra step. I got these from iStock and just go ahead and purchase creative rights for the photos. And if you want, I can add links in the description. I just haven't done that because it is, you know, my intention is not to give away free photos or anything, but if you guys are looking to sell or anything other than just like practicing or doodling or, you know, that's fine. But if you're planning to sell any of these once you're finished with your project, you need to purchase rights to the photo to avoid having somebody like, you know, come at your door and be like, um... You can't do this or get something in the mail saying that you owe like $20,000 in copyright because you did not get permission from the photographer to use their photo that they probably edited and took the time to make look as good as it does and that you just decided to steal. You know what I mean? So just cover yourself on that end. and then it'll be hunky-dory. Right now I'm adding um, our powder blue from the Prismacolor series into some of some of our lower highlights here.
Um, I have this random gray color that I kind of just want to start using. It's from Master's Touch. It's probably not light fast, but it is a color I want to put on here. It's a little bit harder pencil too, so I can add itty bitty little, just enough details in there. Just enough. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take our purple, go back in a little bit with our purple. This will also kind of help soften up some of our color that we put on there. Um, I think one of the things, so I guess like question of the day would be how to overcome worrying or not knowing like maybe what your piece might look like after you might like put like one or two layers on. You're like, oh, I don't, you know, you start to think like, I don't know about this. Like, I wonder how this is going to turn out. I, I'm always so excited when I first put the like the first layer down on any drawing that I do I'm always like so excited because I know that at the end whatever I have in my head is finally going to be out on paper and I can get it out of my head <laughs> and I feel like until the day that I'm no longer here it's just that's just how it's going to be but so how to overcome that um it's a great question. Why do I ask great questions? <laughs> just go for it. That's the only thing I got is just go for it. Do it, try it, experiment. And there's not there's no wrong or right way to do art now. There might be some methods that are questionable, you know, like Probably would not have done that kind of thing, but I see what you tried to do. You know, there's always that. But not, you know, don't get so hung up on getting the right color either. Because you can have all of the color pencils in the world and you'll still be blending them together.
Is there a difference in color pencil quality? Quality, yes. Are there different types? Like there's different ways you can hold, like this, we would still be doing the first layer if I did this, oh my gosh. But now I'm kind of at that kind of nitty gritty phase of adding in all of my colors. I need my horse to be a little bit more brown and not purpley. <laughs> um, anyway, so once you practice more and you get used to it, experiment, do different things, try different colors. Yeah, like, when you go to the art store, you don't have to get a huge drawing pad. Get like one of those like five or six dollar like little sketch pads that has a type of paper that you want. And they go from there. And some art stores might sell individual art pages. Mine does not. Um, so you're lucky if you find one that does. And then I would maybe take like a, a couple pieces, cut them up at home, make them into smaller things. And just try something. Like maybe, and then something to help train your eye too, instead of looking at a whole picture, um, Take like print off a photo or something, whatever you have a computer, if you have to go to the store, um, or if, or um, you know, however you want to do it, just take a section of your, of the photo or image, whether it's yours or um, you were able to purchase it and and able to use it, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and cut it so that, and then kind of like kind of mix it around and then practice drawing that way and coloring that way. It actually make a, a really nice, unique piece as well. So you could do that. Uh, and that will help increase your confidence and your ability for color prints. Like right now, I'm very abstractly <laughs> putting in mama horse back here. We are going to get some, I think I want to put some dark umber in there. And I, I think I might actually add, while well, I'm at it, add some more Tuscan red in there. Because this, this mare has red just like her baby does. Oh, and we got to do the side of the neck. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot. Okay, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> Ipsies, I just got so focused on doing the mama horse today I forgot to do the neck. Holy bananas. Okay, there's not too much red. I think that's kind of really only where the red lies. And I would like this color. Um, I grabbed the bronze. And... Sienna Brown, I think. No, mm. yeah, we're gonna have to go with our orange, our dark orange, because I, I believe that's kind of what this color looks like. It's actually, it's, it's really closer to like a bronze orange. Is that even a thing? Is bronze orange even a thing? If bronze orange is a, is a thing, someone please let me know. That's what I need. Uh, okay, maybe I'll use this one. I just don't want to add dark, dark colors. There's like a little bit of this color here. And you can't really, I don't want to put too much up here because I want it to really kind of just whoop, fade in this way. And of course there's color up here. All right, on to our light gray. Again, 
just in case you're skipping around the video, I am not trying to add too much detail because this horse, mama horse, is in the background. And there's almost no point in getting her too detailed because it'll take away from baby full. I need a darker brown. <laughs> that is not working. <laughs> it worked a little bit, but not as much as I wanted it to. I know I keep saying we're going to get to to blending this out and I just keep I just keep going. I just like to put all, most of my colors down before I start doing any blending. All right, well, I better stop before I get too crazy. All right, I got to go find my blending thing. Um I will be right back. There'll be a short little skip. All right, so I am back. I got my blendy thingy that I want to use. And I cannot find my blending stump. Of course, once I grab, there it is. So sometimes I use mineral spirits and sometimes I use Vaseline. Um, sometimes uh, mineral spirits, I like it, but I like Vaseline, uh, it's it's different. It, it just is. You can like use your fingers on it if you want. I just think I have a little bit better control over the Vaseline than I do with mineral spirits. But I've used both. Now I like now like the background itself, like once I get I think I am I think I might do the background. I might. I, I'm already like in the mood. I got a three-day weekend here. It's Memorial Day weekend. And I, I might end up doing the background, though I don't want to spend all weekend doing the background because I do would like to work on the lion that I am doing. And then also, um, your blending stump, if you use a blending stump, it'll pick up some of the color, too. So if you accidentally went, like, a little too dark in some areas, you can always use your blending stump and maybe with some Vaseline and, and kind of pick it up a little bit. Now, you don't have to use a whole lot, um, but I am, I I put, like, a nice glob size on it, though, and I and I just basically smeared it around. And at some point it does, you know, it's got to put a little bit more on. So this is, uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I do have some just on my finger here. And I just gently actually use my thumb a little bit too. And I just roll it right in there. Now I'm not going to do the dark areas first because I want to do the light areas while I have all of my color on there. 
And this also reminds me, I guess, of graphite drawing. If any of you have done graphite drawing, um, I used to do it a lot when I was younger. And But this color stuff, coloring, just... I used to be afraid of color, and now I, I'm actually kind of hesitant to go back to graphite because I'll be tempted to add color or something in there. Now I'm kind of going back and picking up some color from the other areas and trying to distribute it in between those lines there. Now I know like once we get some of this blended out it's not going to be the finished mama horse. And it does sometimes take a second for the Vaseline to break up the wax. But we can already see that the color is changing. And then we kind of just work around our little blobs that we have. And we can actually make them into little blobs now. Our nice little blobs. I call them blobs. <laughs> Blobble blobs. Do, do, do. Oh, my car is also still getting fixed in the shop. It'll be in there for another week. They just put the paint on it, so I'm assuming that they are just letting it cure. Hopefully. Maybe I might get it back, like, Wednesday. That would be nice. I don't know how long a car has to sit after they paint it. That is a area I am not familiar with. And we're kind of just chilling and blending away. Now there is one thing, once you get a lot of wax build up on like your blending stumps, you want to make sure that you don't accidentally leave um, smudge marks on any light areas because that, that will be very hard to get out. So you definitely, when you use your bling stump, you want to have one just for your light colors and one just for like your really, really, really dark colors. And you just want to be wary of how much you're putting in one area or how much you're taking up in one area. And, and now you can use it to your advantage too. Like right here, I want to add a little bit more dark, and I know I have some dark on my 
uh, blending stump and I can go in and literally add just enough, very soft. Can go back down here, pick up a little bit more. If you end up putting too much Vaseline in one area, I would take a very light cloth or a gentle paper towel or something, but don't smear it. Just gently dab. Um, Vaseline will eventually dry, but if you think you've put too much down, that's what I would do, but I usually just let it dry. And then once it dries, um, you can actually work right on top of it. How long does Vaseline take to dry? Depends on how much you put down. Same thing with mineral spirits. If you put a ton down, it might take a little bit longer for you to be able to work on top of it. Same thing with Vaseline. I just like Vaseline some more so sometimes over the other one, like I said earlier, because that I have more control. All right, I think I actually might want to try, I'm actually just going to go ahead and use my uh, finger for this area here. Just because my finger has a little bit more surface area. Okay, I'm going to use the lighter side of my blending stump. Going to take our dark umber. Why does my dark umber disappear? Oh, there it is. Every time. I think it's just because it blends in so well with the sepia color. I think it's another sepia. And I would like, I actually would really like my denim blue. Denim, my denim blue. Do, 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 do. That is not it. Where did you go? That is black. Denim blue. Ah, oh, there you are.
There's a lot more blue shades in the muzzle that I am adding in. There's probably a little bit more blue there. There's a little bit of blue right here. And now I'll use our blending stump. And we will eventually kind of pick up some of those blues that we just put down. I kind of like using uh, Vaseline and the blending stump because it, it almost feels like I'm really like really sketching into my paper. And it also helps shift and move colors too. Now I'm kind of collecting some of this purple that I've put down and I'm using it to help soften the edges around some of these vein looking colors. Vein looking colors around some of these veins. Don't don't mind me. I I am just, I just want my coffee. <laughs> I want my coffee for the day. For the week actually. I only get coffee once a week. It hypes me up too much. <laughs> But can you see now how, see why I put Mama Horse off to the side on our video a little bit and, and had our main horse here? We can really see it starting to come together. Because like right now, like yes, I am like sitting kind of more in front of this. But if I step back and look away, I'd be like, okay, so mom is off to the side. Mom is eating some hay or whatever. And little foal is like, oh, camera? Sure. I said take a picture.
All right. I just got my coffee, which is awesome. All right, so now we're going to go in. Um, I have this peachy color. And we're going to go in and gently start finishing up our colors. I like that sometimes um, the Vaseline, sometimes it does take a little bit to dry, but then I can use my other colors and gently go on top and they just glide right on top. That's how I like to work. If you want it to dry completely, completely, then by all means, wait a little bit longer. How long? I, I truthfully... I, I do not know how long Vaseline takes to dry. <laughs> I apologize. I don't have all the answers. dropped a colored pencil no oh my goodness oh, I got it all right I'm going back in with a little bit of my blending stump I want to soften this area up just a little bit and create a little shadow here There you go, and there's a little one right there. Actually, you know what I want to do? I'm using my little sand right here, my little sanded paper. And I wonder if I kind of pick up some of it if it would work. Oh yeah. Look at us go. <laughs> Creating the soft details. All right, I think I would really like this right here darker. So you want darker? Sure, we'll just slab it on there. And I think I want to lighten this up around here. I don't think I want those as deep as I have them looking.
And we'll gently blend this as well. I think some burnt sienna would go a long way. It's just adding some more richness to our drawing. And now we're kind of just going and kind of touching up some areas. I'm not done with this cheek. But I would like to add, I don't think I want to add pink pink. I don't think this is the color either I want. Nope, that's a dark pink. <laughs> oh, here you are this rose color. Oh, I gotta take a sip. Look at this massive thing I got. Whoa! <laughs> it is a caramel frappuccino with java chips. Double blended so the java chips don't get stuck in the straw. And you just swirl it around. Mm. Take a nice sip. And I had enough points to get that for free today. Other than the tax. I think I paid tax on it. And then it was delivered. <sighs> Alright. You might not be able to see this color, but it's on there. It is actually blending quite nicely in there. It's just a little hard to see. Now, my dog wanted in here so bad and now he just <sighs> at me. He just did this exhausted <sighs> Where is, where did you, oh, there you are. I'm losing my colors. All right, so I guess I could kind of talk a little bit about what's going through my head a little bit as I do this. Uh, firstly, I, I wish there were like translucent colors in the world. Uh, secondly, like how do I get what I see onto paper? And you have to kind of think too, like, okay, well my paper's already white. How do I work with white? And what kind of, you know, how, how do my pencils overlap in white? And then should I use white over top of that? So that's what, that, that is currently what's going through my head.
I think I would like my... Uh, I have, this is electric blue, and I think this is going to add a really nice color over top. I, I just don't want white, white. And this starts to add a whole different dimension of color in here. So we have uh, blue, purples, reds. I don't think I've added black yet. Let's add some black. <laughs> Let's look at all the colors of the rainbow on here. Now the only places I'm going to add black are right here at the bottom. Right where the shadows are the complete darkest. And I'm going to avoid my little whiskers I made. That's it. Oh, and maybe up here. She might throw in a little bit of light umber on the corner here. Oof, bam, I is done. <laughs> JK, I'm using my harder wax uh, black. Help create. A little bit more of a feel there. Same thing with this eyelid. And I have yet to do the foals hair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oopsies. Now sometimes horse hair is 
either very silky or maybe it's a little curly. So you just gotta work with it. Taking my light umber. I'm using my finger to blend. Now he does have an ear up here, so we could probably kind of add that in a little bit. Dark umber.
So what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm kind of preparing this corner to be blended out. You cannot really tell too much. And again, this is this mom horse is not my focus. <laughs> Just coloring along.
<laughs> Using my yeah, pumpkin orange. <laughs> And then going to make a nice point on my Going in with the dark umber. Going in with my white again, because I would like to lighten this little area up right here. Pumpkin orange, the corner here.
I would like a pink color, my peachy peachy peach. Ooh, or even this one would work. Oh, I gotta take a sip of my coffee. Oh, this is so good. Looking for my light number. Sorry, I'm not really talkative, but um, right now it's just basically kind of getting all my uh, shadows and shades the way I want them. Hmm. Want to add some So right now I'm just adding color where I would like to add color. Again, you don't have to, you can follow a bit more along with the photo. 
but this is what I like. This is like what I guess your like little mini artist kind of coming out where it's like, you know what, I would kind of like to do this here and I would like to kind of do this here. And I would like to get some more gray. <laughs> Getting some more gray up along. Here. I feel pretty confident to add some of this in. Sorry, I'm changing, slightly changing positions. This is a, a dark purple, but it's a, a tough, it's a hard box, sorry. Focusing. Taking uh, the black raspberry. And a little bit of dark umber. <laughs> Where is uh, my slate gray?
Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we're kind of just watching in peace and quiet, but that is where we're at at the moment. All right, let's take a step back look and let's see. I think I would like to add a little bit of purple there. A little bit right there. Some right there. Adding a little bit of our highlights back in. Whoop. Just kicking things around, don't mind me. And I think I would like to go in with our burnt sienna and then just add a bit of color. Just in some places. There, I think we got that. And then, 
think I'm going to take my chocolate color. And add a little bit of texture back. So I'm going to cross hatch a little bit through here. Just add some texture back. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Shh, no one will know. <laughs> right, trying to zoom out as much as I can. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, we need to uh, stop this video and make a new one. And so the next one will be part 13. Um, and we will do the neck and the hairs. And so we'll do three different things. Neck, four top, and uh, the shade on the nose. And then I think uh, we might go ahead and do some of the background. Might as well. <laughs>